first sentence is like a general background filler piece. General truth about experimentation and you have to be, have things be able to be replicated. Things must be repli replicable. But Samaru and Ott say that the smallest change has big consequences. Small changes, big results. That makes me think of the idea, the whole idea of chaos theory in general. Like you don't have to relate it to that, but that's what I took in. So I, auto I automatically relate it to a preconceived idea I have in my head about the world that I can latch onto as a concept. So chaos theory, butterfly flaps its wings somewhere, causes a, a rainstorm somewhere else, right? So small changes, big effects. Then they say that the system is represented by a computer model. So motion of a particle in a certain force field. Now, I have really no clue what that means. What I'm getting from that is that they've, they've made some sort of like computer representation of that idea where we have particle in motion in a space. So I'm thinking of like maybe an atom is bouncing around in a box. So again, I'm making a concrete image in my head that wasn't in the passage, but at least it's giving me an image of some kind. Think of one of those screensavers where it bounces around from one corner to the other. It bounces in one place. If you shift the position a little bit, it'll bounce completely different results every time because of that. The summer not base their system on an analogy with riddled basins of attraction. What does that mean? They'll define it presumably, but I'm thinking, okay, a basin, and they say water. That actually matters. So a basin is a container in which to which you put water. Like think of like a baby's bathtub. You pour water into the middle of America and some of it will like slant down the sides, some to Pacific, some to Atlantic. And that's assuming that of course the landmass was sloped things would inevitably go down one way or the other. Which way does it go? Depends on the geographic features. So if you have mountains, you have valleys, that's, or you have a lake, that's going to impact where the water goes. A basin of attraction. Now, the attraction idea is that it's, quote unquote, pulling the water in that direction. Now, it's probably not really pulling it, but gravity and the slope would dictate that it goes in a certain direction. So a steeper slope no obstacles, it's going to that basin. It's going to that ocean, let's say. Then they go on, third paragraph. Is it going to the north portion of the Pacific or the south portion of the Pacific? You may not always be able to tell. Beyond that, you may not even know which, which ocean it goes to. That's because it's riddled with fractal properties. So, this is the, so we've talked about the basins. We've talked about a, a basin is the ocean. Attraction is the gravity as well as you know, the, the, how smooth the path is for the water to flow down. The riddled is whatever bumps are on the land. So any hills, any mountains, any pockmarks like little lakes or divots or valleys, grooves in the ground. And in some cases, if it's that chaotic and there's that many irregularities, then you couldn't even do it with a formula because there's too much randomness involved. Too many regularities, the only way to know is to actually spill it. And if you spilled it even one millimeter in any direction, it would have a totally different path. Now, the fourth, they're saying that there, this, this boundary, and so when they say this boundary, what are we talking about? I'm thinking back to the beginning here, which is like the force field. So, and they even say the force field, so that I guess I was right there. So the idea is that as you look at the factors that impact where the water flows, you have to consider so an increasing number of factors, an increasing number of considerations to the point that you're including the entire world. Because then you're factoring in, okay, well, there's also the wind, the velocity of the wind, the direction of the wind, solar flares, the motion of, of the moon and other planets. It just gets increasingly complicated to the point that as you consider every input into that system, you're going to include like the whole universe. So everything has a consequence. In that system, you could generally predict, okay, it's going towards the Atlantic or it's going towards the Pacific. But beyond that, we can't say too much. Will it, which route will it take towards the Atlantic? We don't know. Where in the Atlantic will it end up? We don't know. But probably, may, I don't know, 55%, 60%, it's going towards the Atlantic. So... This was just one model, one analogy was riddled basins. But 
I'm just making this up now. Maybe this impacts, you could use this model, this idea to predict the stock market, or you could predict how many people are going to go to law school or which colleges and universities are going to close due to COVID outbreaks, like all sorts of things in the real world that we're modeling here based on, okay, well, chaotic systems, lots of factors that we're considering. The idea that this is the only chaotic system out there with water, the way water flows into two oceans, or even they said just bit basins, whatever that means. Like they're saying, that's not it. This has wide applicability, most likely. The replication crisis in science, where they can't replicate a lot of studies, could be due to all these chaotic factors. And so now I'm going to relate it back to that logical reasoning question with the heart disease and the fish oil, where lots of alternative possibilities and explanations, those are chaotic factors. Are these health nuts also biking, meditating, exercising? What other complicating factors are there that, that can mess up a system and confuse what the outputs will be? So maybe fish oil, again, has nothing to do with heart disease, but it's very difficult to find a cohort of people who take fish oil and don't do all the other stuff. And then even if you assign people randomly to take fish oil, that could still be problematic because who obeys instructions properly? People who are conscientious. Conscientious people also listen when their doctor says you should exercise more, so they're still exercising more anyway, even if they're not deliberately doing so. So things are complicated. And that's the passage. Again, this was a lot to walk through, right? Like this is really, really complicated. And it would be, again, hard to understand even just the passage alone in 845. But you see, I'm leaning on the tools of things like real world analogies. I'm bringing in a lot of stuff that isn't there, but helps me, helps ground me in understanding what's happening. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.